There's somebody out there facing a battle this morning. But where are they at? What are they doing this morning? I want to tell you, they need to be in the house of the Lord. They need to be seeking His face. Because there's going to come a time when that battle's going to come to your home. It's going to come to your house. And it's going to infest its way into your family, into your situation. But I want to tell you, God is greater than any battle that we're going to go through in this life. Uh, I, I think about last night I was sitting there in my chair and, and I think about that young husband, probably in his, in his late 30s or early 40s, sitting there just sobbing, praying for his wife. But you could feel the presence of the Lord in that place, like Marie said. God was all in there. But what got me the most, my sermon's going to be on the battles. But what, I, what got me the most yesterday, I heard that young man. He said, baby, he said, your battle's over. He said, you ain't got to suffer no more. It's done with. So think about it this morning. We're going to have to face that same situation one day. Amen. Are we going to be in the position to say that, that we're going to where God is? There's only two places that we can go. It's either heaven or hell. Amen. Go with me if you will to Deuteronomy. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 3. When you get there, say amen. amen. Chapter 3, verse 1. I'm going to go from 1 to 3. So it says, we turned and went up the way of Bashan, and Og, the king of Bashan, came out against us, he and all his people, to battle at Ibrahim. And the Lord said unto me, Fear him not, for I will deliver him and all his people and his land into thy hand, and thou shalt do unto him as thou didst unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, which dwelt at Heshbon. Verse 3. So the Lord our God delivered into his hand Og also the king of Basham and all his people. And we smote him until noon was left to him remaining. Or until none was left to him remaining. Father, I thank you this morning, Lord, for this word that you've given me. God, I ask you to anoint me to bring it just the way you've given it to me. No more, no less. I ask you, God, to hide me behind the cross this morning. In the precious name of your son, Jesus. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You know, Moses is, is, is talking about the battle that, that they was in whenever they were passing through on their way to the promised land. So think about it this morning. There's so many types of battles out there in this world that, that we face every day. Just, that we face every day. But I want to tell you something. We don't have to face the battle alone. Uh, a lot of times we'll take it upon ourselves, say, well, I can do this and I can do that. But I want to tell you something. You can't do nothing without the hand of God being in it. Yeah. You know, that, and I, I'm talking about my, my niece this morning. I've watched that young girl. I've watched her grow up from a baby to where she was at yesterday. You know, and it, it's hard. It's hard. My brother, he, he, he went on to be with the Lord first. That was her daddy. He wasn't but 50 years old. And here she is, a young lady. Young people, I want to tell you something. You need to get right with God. You need to serve 
God the way that he wants you to serve him instead of being out there in the streets doing what the world wants. It's time that we stood up. It's time that the church stood up and took a stand against the enemy because the battle, I want to tell you, the battle is real. We're not just fighting against people out there. We're fighting against principalities. Paul said it in the Word. He said, we don't fight against flesh and blood, but we fight against what? Principalities. Talking about yes. evil spirits. Yes. <clears throat> Amen. I'm preaching to Farrell this morning. He's the only one in the choir. Amen. <laughs> so listen to me. You know, whenever God sends us out to do something, we need to do it to our best ability. There's times that I don't want to be up here preaching. Why is that? Because I allow, I'm flesh, just like the rest of us in here. Yeah. And the enemy comes against me sometimes. Well, a lot of the times. And why is that? Because I'm trying to do a work for the Lord. And, and God uses me I know he does because I can feel it in my spirit. I'm not saying I'm the greatest preacher in the world don't claim to be, but I can feel the spirit of God. Amen. I Amen. know when God leads me and guides me to do a certain thing in my life, I follow his direction. Just as Moses followed the direction of God. Moses began to pray and seek God's face because he knew that he was going to have that battle, the battle that he was about to face. I want to tell you, somebody in here this morning, you're about to face a battle. Don't face it alone. Let God lead you through that battle. You know, I have been in several battles in my life. But God has always been true. True to his word. And he's always brought me through. Amen. I was victorious over that cancer that cut off my face. We got a man sitting in here this morning that had the same situation. He was victorious. God Amen. brought Brother Lynn through it. Say, well, I don't know if he did or not. I, I think the doctor did. No, the doctor didn't do that. Yeah. Brother Lynn, God brought you through that situation. Yeah. He loves his children. And I mentioned Moses standing at the burning bush. Moses would call for a purpose. God told him what he wanted him to do. How many of y'all have heard the voice of God? How many of you has heard God telling you that there's a work for you to do? What does this word say? That we're to go out mm -hmm. and compel them to come in. Go out to the highways and the hedges, the byways, and compel them to come in. Yeah. It, 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 it gets frustrated. Some I get frustrated sometimes because... In my heart, I believe we should have a church full of people. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. And it hurts my heart to see that we don't have that house full of people. And I begin to pray, Brother White, this is my battle. I begin to pray and I begin to see God's face. I ask God this question. I say, God, is it me? Is it me? Is that why they're not coming? Am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Sometimes I feel like that I'm not. I feel like that I'm not worthy to do, to stand behind this sacred desk here. But then I hear hear that small voice says don't give up don't quit 
How many times, Brother White, have you wanted to just throw in the, the rug, you know, throw in your hat, close the doors, walk away? Amen. But I want to tell somebody this morning, that's what the enemy wants us to do. He wants to win that battle that we're having against him. But all oh, greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. That's a battle I'll never let the enemy win. Because I'm going to stand on that promise that God has given me that I could have the joy of this world. You know, I can do what God wants me to do, but I can only do it with his leading and his guiding. Just like he told Moses. Mm -hmm. He said, you go, and, and I will fight this fight for you. So think about it this morning. All of us that are in a battle this morning, I feel like that I've just been shot down. I was up here, and now I'm down here. I've been shot down. This battle, the enemy is taking his best shot. But you know what? I got a God. All I got to do is like to call on God. And God sent fire down from heaven. Amen. I want to tell you, we serve a mighty God. So if you feel like I do sometimes, say, well, I don't, I don't need to go to church. I, I'm just done with it. I've had all I can stand. That's when you begin to stand. You need to begin to stand then. Because the enemy's won that battle with you, between you and him. He's won. When you give in, he's won. But I want to tell you, I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to quit. I'm just going to keep on fighting the good faith. Because without God, without God, Sister White, I am nothing. I am nothing. You are nothing. Second Chronicles 20 and 15. You ain't got to go there if you don't want to. But it talks about Jehoshaphat. The enemy, the king's fixing to come against him. Jehoshaphat feared because Jehoshaphat was just a just a little little player, you know. He he didn't he, he just couldn't stand up against the bigger armies and, and all that. Think about it this morning. How big are you in God's kingdom? Are you able to stand up against the enemy when he comes? Stacy, are you able? God give you the strength to do it? Jehoshaphat was afraid. The Bible says that he began to cry out to the Lord, him and his kingdom. And God told him, said Jehoshaphat, said you need to stand still. You don't have to fight in this fight. said you don't have to fight it because I will fight it for you. He said stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Some of us sometimes we, we can't stand still when God tells us not to move. And God tells us just to stand still and watch me take over. We can't do that sometimes. We got to do it our way. Because we think that God can't hear us. I guarantee you, God hears every prayer that you pray. <coughs> and he, he understands our fight. <coughs> Excuse me. He understands that battle that we're going through every day. And as long as we serve him, he, he is able. It says, go back to Deuteronomy. It says, that as children of God, I can't even read my own rep. <laughs> We're not immune. 
We're not immune. Just because we serve God, we're not immune to battles. In other words, we're going to face battles in our lifetime. Sometimes it seems that we'll be defeated. But I wrote this. I said, don't give up. Don't give up. When the devil thinks that he got you, just kick a little harder. Don't give up. Fight a little longer. Amen. Don't give in to him. So we don't need to fear the enemy. We need to seek God's face and let him fight the battle for us just as he did there. Philippians 4. Turn with me to Philippians. I'll read that. Philippians 11 through 13. Philippians what? 11 through 13. 11 through 13. Oh, Philippians 4, 11 through 13. You there say amen. amen. Not that I speak in, in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith be to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me, notwithstanding ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessities. In other words, they took care of Paul because of what he needed to do a work for God. They took care of him. Paul just told him, said, I, I'm, what he's saying, he says, I'm thanking you for taking care of me for meeting my needs. What does God do? He meets our needs. Whenever we have a need, God will meet it. I want to tell you, they, I've times when I've been down and out and I needed this and I needed that, but you know what? It always comes to pass. It always comes through for me, Brother White, because yeah. I serve a God that is a that is a mighty God. And I know that He is able to move this mountain that we face every time we have a situation. All we got to do is say, tell that mountain to be thou removed. And what does the Word of God say? It'll be cast into the sea. Amen. Never to remember it again. Never to come back at us. Think about that this morning. All these troubles and trials that we go through, every battle, that we face. I have children facing battles today, but yet they don't want to give it to God. They want to live out there and let, let the world take care of it. The world won't make nothing out of it except worse. Except worse. Mm -hmm. Raised up in church. Yeah. Now they rebel. Just like the enemy wants. You have children, you have kin folks the same way. I'm not the only one. Amen. But one day, they're going to sit at a hospital bed. They're going to cry out to God. They're going to say, baby, your battle's over. I don't want my battle just to be over. I want to know where I'm going. And I'm making preparation. How about you this morning? Are you making preparation to, to be with the Lord? You say, I've said it several times, there's only two places that we can go, either heaven or hell. And God gave us a choice to make that decision. Which way? Which way do you want to go? You know, 
Paul was a, a, a great prophet, a great worker for God. But in the beginning, in the beginning, Paul wouldn't like that. You see, he was a persecutor of the Christians. Sister White, he went and he got them and he either killed them or brought them into prison. Doing what, what the king wanted him to do. I want to tell you, 12 years old, Jesus, Joseph, and Mary, they had left. Went off. I think it was a three day journey. They was gone away from him. They, they didn't know where he was at. But when they went back to get him, they found him at 12 years old. Age of one of these little children in here. Preaching in the temple, reading the word of God. Why? What did he tell them? Whenever they asked him what was he doing, he said, I must be about my father's business. How many of us in here today are not about our father's business? We need to be doing what God wants us to do. What is that? That's to reach that lost and dying world out there. God has communicated. He gave us tools to communicate with them through YouTube or whatever, all these uh, <coughs> things that, it, that he's given us, and yet they still won't come. But one day, one day that loved one, that they loved so dear, God forbid it be one of your children. But I've watched, I watched the breath go out of that young lady yesterday. And it tore my heart out. I couldn't stay in there. But I heard the words of that husband. He said, baby, your battle's over. And you don't have to fight no more. That's going to be us one day. One day our battle's going to be over. Where are you going to go when your battle's over? What's going to happen to you? Are you going to be able to lift your voice up to God and say, God, here I am. Here I am. You're my Redeemer. You're my Savior. You're the one I live for. I love my wife. But sometimes we get in a battle. We don't need to, but we do. But because she loves the Lord, and I love the Lord, we can work through our situation. She may get mad at me, and I may get mad at her. We may do things, say things we don't really need to say, but yet they'll come back. God will speak to us, and we'll come back together and try to work out our situation. The devil. 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about seeking whom he may devour. That word sober means to keep your eyes open, to be ready, to know where you're at at all times. To be vigilant means that he's, he's on the, he's on the, he's stalking you. He's on the path. But you know what? We can be sober. 
we can keep our eyes on God and let him lead us in the direction that he wants us to go. <clears throat> the enemy would like nothing better than to have you to where you couldn't do nothing or everything that you've done just turned away, turned, turned into nothing. You know, I watch, I watch my kinfolk, I watch my children. I got good children, by the way, I want to I wanna say that. I've got good children. They just don't go to church. That don't make them bad because they don't. Because I know they love the Lord. But I would rather see them in the house of God, serving God, calling out to God, praying to God, than I had to see them out there having a good time out there in that world. They think if you're a Christian, you can't have a good time. <laughs> but I want to tell you, I, I have a party right by myself sometimes. When I get along with God, I feel that spirit, that unction, those holy bumps on me. I, I feel that come on me. And I begin to cry out to God. I say, God, this battle's not mine, but Lord, it belongs to you. God, no matter what I do, Lord, I'm a child of yours, and you're my king, you're my savior, you're my holy God, and I'm the one, I look at you because you are that in my life. What does the word say? He says, I am a jealous God. Why? He says, I only want you to serve one God, and that's me, because I am, a, I'm paraphrasing, because I am a jealous God. Think about it this morning. The battle that you're going through. Stand with me if you will. The battle that you're going through. What, what, what caused the battle? Is it something that you didn't do? Or is it something that you said? Or is it something that you done? What caused that battle that you're going through today? Look at your children. Every one of them's in a battle if they're out in the world. They're in a battle. Just because we're in church don't mean that we're immune right. from, from that battle because we're, we're in the world, but we don't have to be a part of this world. Corinthians said, come out from among them and be you what? A separate people. A separate people. Yeah. We got to separate ourselves <laughs> from that world out there not from just from the world, but the things of the world. We have to separate ourselves. So if you need a touch from God this morning, these altars are open. I know, I know this is a, a short message and all, but I hope that I got my point across about the battles that we've been, that this life brings to us. I said this a while ago, you know, that young lady that lay on that bed with that tube down her throat. The only way she could breathe, it was breathing far. When they took that tube out, you could just see her gasp for air. That battle that she'd been fighting for years was about to be over. Wouldn't a, wouldn't a good good battle, but it's things that we all probably will go through at one time in our life. But I can say this. I believe that her heart was right with God. Because I know, I've seen things that she's posted on Facebook and all, and it's all been, been about God. That don't mean that she, she was right with God, but in my heart, I feel 
that she was, Sister Flower. And I feel like that she's with God this morning and her daddy, my brother. See, she thinks that she got to see her daddy again. Mm -hmm. Hey, Flower. I think about seeing your love so much. When my brother died, I caught myself going by his house. I was so used to seeing him. So I would go by his house. Knew that he wasn't there, but yet I would go by there. I love my brother, and I'll see him one day, and I'll see my daddy and my mom, but my brother, I'll see him. But most of all, through all these battles of life, we still, when we get to heaven, we have won the victory. We have fought a good faith, as Paul said. All the good fight kept the faith. So think about it this morning. As these altars are open, if you need prayer, come and we'll pray for you. If not, we're going to ask Brother White to dismiss. Father God, I know each and every one of us has our own battles in you, God. Lord, you touch each and every individual in here, and if they have any, God, comfort them. Lord, and if you will, bless this service, God. Bless the pastor, the message that he delivered to each and every one of us, God. Lord, you also take care of us as we leave this presence of this building here, God, to go to our homes and whatever we have to go in there, God. And also look after each and every family that's had loved ones to pass in the last few days. You, you take and put a, a, a special attention towards each and every family, God. Comfort them from what they're going through, God. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray that you'll comfort each and every one of us in here as we depart the building and show back up at the next appointed time. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Remember tonight, yeah. five yeah. o'clock. Be back with us. I'm a villager. Call somebody and invite them. Invite them to come to church. Amen.